The boys of summer play today to live out a midsummer night's dream. From Waco, Texas, it's the Southwest Regional Championship. Midland, Texas meets River Ridge, Louisiana with a trip to Williamsport and the Little League World Series on the line. We began with eight teams. We're down to two. And on Monday, Louisiana beat Texas in a closely contested 6-5 game. Today's game is for all the orange slices. Texas West is a pretty good team. Uh, they have a bunch of great players. We've seen what they do, and we're just going to come out ready to fight. They got a lot of pitching, and they can really hit the ball. If we play our game and hit the ball like we did, just not right at them, we should win. We're the underdogs, and I love that. We'd like a rematch badly, too. Texas is historically a team that comes out of this region, and we want to change that. So bring it. It's going to be an even better game than this last one. Our boys know what they've seen on the field, and they know they can, they can play with them. Actions speak louder than words, so we'll see what happens on the field. And Shroff alongside former big leaguer Keith Moreland. When you're 10, 11, 12 years old, Williamsport is your El Dorado, no your doubt. Shangri-La. Both of these teams, one win away. And for Louisiana, they're going to ride their best pitcher and their best player, Marshall Luke. Well, you just look at Marshall Luke. It, it, when a storm approaches, a lot of times the first thing you see is lightning. Well, he's got a lightning for a right arm. At times, mid-70s with his fastball, he's got a breaking ball to go with it. But then the other part of it, when you see lightning, what do you see? You hear thunder, and he has got some big-time power. Back-to-back -back home runs in this first game between Texas and Louisiana. He is the guy that has brought Louisiana to the table. You can see his numbers in ERA. He's given up one earned run. He's hit two balls out of the ballpark. He has struck out nine, and those two home runs both came against this Midland Texas team just a couple of days ago. Well, Midland has its star power, too. They've got Aiden Serrano, who has been a five-tool player in this regional. You know, you, you hear that term a lot, but this young man can do everything. He can hit, he can hit with power, he can run. He, he showed you that in the first ball game. Uh, he doubled twice to drive in four. He's been very consistent at home plate. And then the other part that he brings to the table is he can really go get it in center. He's made a couple of plays and then a dynamite throw here, the best thrower of this Southwest Regional to keep Texas in the game on Monday night. And then the last thing he does, he's going to go to the mound, and we know he's got an above average arm. What's unique is we have not seen him we pitch in this regional. The coaches told me yesterday they feel he's got a great arm, maybe as good as we've seen in this regional. They've been sitting on pocket aces, literally, Keith, an ace in the hole. Well, they sure have, and uh, now we're going to get to it. Star power here. At stake today, a trip to Williamsport and the Little League World Series. Will it be Midland, Texas, or River Ridge, Louisiana? First pitch after this. Today is the greatest day to play baseball. Yeah! You hear me? Yes, sir! Let's play for hard, bust our butts, and go have fun. You got me? Yes, sir! That's what Northern baseball is all about. You yes, got me? Yes, sir! Let's do it, fellas. Yes, sir! Hey. We do it as a team if we do it. You got it? Yes, sir! You got it? Yes, sir! Have fun. No matter what happens, next play, okay? Mistakes are going to be made. Strikeouts are going to happen, okay? It's a part of baseball. It's who brushes it off and deals with the adversity the best is going to win. We have all the trust in the world in you guys. I'm looking forward in about an hour and 45 minutes to two hours, dog piling on that mound. Midland, Texas, from the plains of West Texas in the center of the Permian Basin. And these boys, one win away from Williamsport. My name's Eric Nevlin. I'm the manager of the Northern Little League All-Stars from Midland, Texas. Here's my team. Hi, my name is Jason Stocksteel, and I'm one of the assistant coaches. Hi, my name is Ray Pearson, and I'm one of the assistant coaches. My name's Crew Colley. I pitch and play right field, and my favorite movie is Anchorman. My name is Grayson Register. I pitch, and my favorite movie is The Benchwarmers. Hi, my name is Jarrett Stockstill. I play second base, and my favorite all-around player is Patrick Mahomes. My name is Aiden Serrano. I play center field, and my favorite movie is Suicide Squad. My name is Kip Colmia. I play left field, and my favorite MLB player is Joey Yellow. My name is Levi Bailey. I play right field, and my favorite food is crab. My name is Yomar Prado. I play left field, 
My favorite baseball players is Javier Baez. My name is Cole Netherland. I play shortstop, and my favorite thing to do is hunt. My name is Jake Nava. I play center field, and I like fishing. My name is Ian Shadden. I play first base, and my favorite MLB player is Christian Yelich. My name is Jaden Rogers. I play third base, and I like hitting dingers. Hi, my name is Carlos La Madrid. I play catcher, and my favorite MLB player is Cody Bellinger. I'm Gavin Schubert. I play catcher, and my favorite college is the Texas Longhorns. And they're going to be facing a good one, making his third start, his third appearance, 2-0 record, six and a third innings of work, allowed one earned run, has not walked a batter. He has struck out nine, and folks, he has got a dynamite fastball. Sometimes it will approach 71, 72, 73 miles an hour, and a really good bender. And he's got command of his bender. He is difficult to hit. His first pitch to Carlos La Madrid, a strike. And there's another fastball, ball one. La Madrid three for 12 in this regional. Favorite athlete is Carlos Correa. Tapped weakly back to the mound. One away. You know, third time, used to the environment, used to the cameras, used to the event. It's not too big for Marshall Luke. You, you, you just look at it. The other thing that go with, go with that, we can give you stats. We can give you the, his ability. But his mound presence is what's so impressive to me. Ball one high to Cole Netherland. His dad, Eric, the manager for this Midland team. Grandfather is also one of the coaches. Netherland ahead, 2-0. He's had a nice regional, 5 for 11. He's driven in 5. He's also walked four times. Yeah, and he, he, he could be that other guy on the mound today for Midland. This is a Midland team that's been together now for pretty much three years. They won the Texas West region as 10-year-olds. They feel they've got a lot of interchangeable parts. In the air to right field, not deep. To lap the second baseman on the outfield grass, two away. Midland, Texas won its opener against Oklahoma, 11-3, then scored all six runs in one inning in the win against New Mexico. The only loss came to Louisiana on Monday night, a 6-5 loss. They were down 4-0 and 5-1 in that game, came back to tie it, and the winning run eventually scored on an error. Great matchup here. Marshall Luke against Aiden Serrano, both players the best on their respective teams. Oh. Serrano, five out of 12 in the regional. He's driven in five. He's also walked four times. Oh. 3 and 0. We just haven't seen many three ball counts. How about a 1-0 breaking ball and a 2-0 breaking ball? That's respect for the hitter. Oh. It'll be interesting here. Does he challenge him here 3-1? Three and two. Solano, a terrific athlete. We've seen it throughout this regional in Waco. Also a very good football player, a running back. And now a 3-2 count with two outs in the top of the first. Right back to Luke. Marshall Luke with a 1-2-3 inning against the top of that Midland lineup. Louis River Ridge, Louisiana, just outside of New Orleans. Sits right on the Mississippi River and East Bank Little League looking to make it all the way to Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Hi, my name is Scott Frazier. I'm the head coach of East Bank Little League, representing the state of Louisiana, and here's my team. Don Abney, assistant coach. Hi, I'm Kevin Johnson, assistant coach. Hi, my name is Peyton Spinoni. I play center field, and my favorite baseball player is Aaron Judge. Hi, my name is Alvin Schwartz. I play left field at home. They call me Lil Al, and I hit singles. I'm Maurice Roussel. I play right field, and I like to chase redfish. I'm Derek Delat. I play second base and pitcher, and my favorite MLB baseball player is Alex Bregman. I'm Marshall Luke. I play third base and pitcher, and I like to fish. I'm Ryan Dara. I play center field and second base, and I like to run touchdowns. Hi, my name is Egan Prather. I play pitcher and catcher, and my favorite baseball player is Gary Sanchez. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Curtis. I play catcher and outfield, 
and my favorite athlete is Ray Lewis. Hi, my name is Ryder Planchard. I play third base and catcher, and my favorite athlete is Zared Jeter. Hi, my name is William Andrade, and I play left field at third base, and I like to climb trees. Hi, my name is Stan Wiltz. I play shortstop, and my favorite athlete is Jose Altuve. I'm Gavin Barry. I play left field, and my favorite food is hamburgers. Hi, my name is Connor Perrault. I play first base, and at home they call me Lola Nugget. And they'll be facing Adrian Serrano. We don't really know what to tell you. He's 5'5", 125 pounds. This is the first time I've ever seen this. And you see a young man that is a great player. We have not seen him on the mound in the Southwest region. We have been told, and watching him warm up, that he's got a firm fastball and a breaking ball. It's interesting, you know, it, the moment is so big, you would think that we, we might have seen him somewhere, in the, somewhere along the line, but we haven't. Good fastball to Ryan Darrow, and it's 0-1. Yeah, it's unique the way Midland, Texas has maneuvered its pitching staff. Jaden Rogers, fantastic yesterday. That was his first appearance of the regional, and now Serrano making his debut on the mound here in the championship game. But Keith, it wasn't hyperbole. Two good fastballs in its own, too. Yeah, it, and command, uh, the moment's not too big at this moment. There's the bender high. I was talking to the coaches before Midland's game yesterday, and we were talking about Serrano and how great he's been in the field and at the plate. I said, can he pitch? And they said, oh, yeah. Yep. Swing and a miss. Darren down on strikes. Well, downhill creates great tilt from the side right here. Watch this ball start and just go dead downhill. The whole way it creates great tilt over the top. Hitters just can't catch up to it. Four pitches and an out. Reese Roussel now the hitter. Roussel two for ten in this regional. One of the two a home run. I don't want to make too much about scouting and advanced scouting in Little League, but when teams aren't playing, their coaches will come to the games sure. and check out some of the other teams. And there is a little bit of the element of surprise not having seen Serrano at all on the mound. Well, it, it, it does help. It, it does, what's his pattern? What is his breaking ball? The first time through, it will be advantage. No doubt. Second time through as a hitter, by that time, I've seen him. You see the release point. You can anticipate the velocity. And velocity, you have to keep short. You cannot have a long swing when, and these two guys today are going to create some velocity. Keith, he's throwing in the mid-60s, but that ball seems to jump on you. Got a little giddy-up. Three-one, lined, base hit, left field. Really nice piece of hitting by Roussel into one-out single. Work the count, get into a fastball count, then prepare for it. Front side gets down. Hands come down, lets the ball get deep, and just goes with it the other way. Now Marshall Luke, Louisiana Lightning on the mound. Thunder, as Keith said, at the dish. Good fastball, strike one. Luke's manager, Scott Frazier, said, Luke's been the best all-around player that Frazier has coached in 20 years. Oh and two. He's got the right number for today, the Ocho. He does have the Ocho on. You know, the, the other part is, you know, we look at these kids, you see these kids, and 
some of them know they can play, and they really allow the game to come to them. They don't force the game. Luke stays alive. He hit two home runs against this Midland team on Monday. One in the first, another in the second. And the first one he hit was in the trees in center field. Almost over the flagpole, right at the top of the flagpole. And out of here. Outside, one and two. You know, when you have two guys that are as capable as these two guys pitching with the stuff they've got. Now the free pass has come into play. The, the pass ball, the wild pitch, the, the walk, the hit batter. Two and two. Sliced foul. Seen a lot of pitches now. Now you start to get your timing. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming. On deck is Connor Parat, who is six for eight in this regional. Time is called. Took something off, and Luca a little early. That's a nice job just to fight off a, a really good located breaking ball right there. He was out in front, but just enough to get a piece of it. That's a really good solid at bat from Luke. Back to the fastball, and he struck him out. This is just dynamite location. Some giddy up on it, outer half. That's, if, that ball, if you don't swing at that, that's a strike. Parats had a really nice regional. Three runs batted in, a home run, two doubles. This one skips away from La Madrid. Roussel down to second base in scoring position with two outs. Louisiana, the only undefeated team in this regional. 3-0, handled Arkansas easily in the opener. Beat Texas East 4-1 in one of the best played games we've seen in this regional. And then held off Texas West, this Midland team 6-5 on Monday. Look at the cleats. For Connor Parat, the batter, his dad Floyd takes leather paint and does the designs by hand for Connor and a number of his teammates. Hey, there's some of them that are really cool. Hey, we got a chance to. There he is right there, Floyd. Done a great job. He just seeing that, seeing them up close, how detailed they are. He's an artist. The kids tell him what they want, and he then just goes and designs it. We were talking to him during the regional, and he said, yeah, I've had to get a Twitter account now and be a little more proactive with my Instagram. He, he has a legitimate business opportunity with this. Well, they, they, are, they are really cool. Swing and a miss. Serrano strikes out the side in his first appearance on the mound in this shot. Monday night, Marshall Luke hit not one, but two home runs. Louisiana exploded for four runs in the first inning. They let 5-1 in this game. Jaden Rogers, though, slugged a home run for Midland. Texas came all the way back to tie it at five. This was how Louisiana scored what would be the winning run on an error, and then Will Andrade made a couple of nice defensive oh, plays in the ninth inning, one of them, or the sixth Web inning, Jim. yeah, to seal the deal. And Jaden Rogers, who homered a couple of days ago, 
will step in to lead off the second. First pitch swing and driven deep to center. One hopping against the wall. Rodgers has been on a tear. Seven for his last nine. Get the barrel ready. Looking fastball. Gets on top of it. Gets in on him just a little bit. Or that ball gets out of the ballpark, but still strong enough to get it to the warning track and a leadoff double. Now that's the little parts of the game right here. Runs are going to be hard to come by. I think you got to move him over and try to get him in right now. True Colley, the hitter, he handles the bat well. First baseman playing for the bunt. Colley swings away. True Colley named after his favorite band, Motley Crue. His parents named him after Motley Crue, and he has since adopted Motley Crue as his go-to music. Squares to bunt. Up the third base line. It's a good one. No play. Everybody's safe. And Midland, Texas in business. First and third. And nobody out. I got to tell you, if you were going to teach bunting, this would be the way to do it. Square it around. Drag bunting. Deadens it right there. See his bat come back. He deadens it. He creates that spin. The ball just stops. And in great speed, no chance to get a, an out at first. Well done. And now with first and third, you can also put something on with the runners. Collie took off down to second, now gets back. No advance from Rodgers at third. Pitch to Levi Bailey was a strike. Still put some pressure. Still had to make a play there. You had to throw it and catch it. Bailey had the big hit in yesterday's win against Oklahoma, a three-run double. Loves to play lacrosse and builds lacrosse sticks from scratch. Louisiana has not trailed since the start of districts. They did not allow a run in district play in the state tournament. Since the start of districts, they've outscored teams 100 to 6. Here's the butt. Five of those six runs were scored by the team they're playing today. Absolutely. A great opportunity here. Strike three. Bailey is down. Holly dancing off first. He'll stay put. One away and a big strike after Luke. Well, he just... He reaches back and gets a little extra here. It dots the eye on the outside corner with some giddy up on it. Not much you can do. Bailey knew immediately that that was a strike. Jarrett stock still now the hitter. Grounded a second. A run will score. They get the runner at first. Throw back to second and Kali able to dive back. Texas West, Midland, Texas on the board first. RBI ground out for Stockstill. Your job as a hitter when you're facing a guy like this, put the ball in play, and that's exactly what he did. I think it was a smart play to make sure you get one on the play to get the out, but it does give Midland the lead. Strike one to Yomar Prado. Still a man in scoring position. A double, a bunt single, a strikeout, and an RBI ground out here in the second. And now Prado behind 0-2. Still look at Luke. He's got great mound press. He's getting the ball ready to go. And he's attacking. Luke comes back with a three-pitch strikeout. But Midland, Texas scratches a run across. They lead 1-0. Won this regional a year ago. And Midland playing for a regional championship right now. Two years ago, Lufkin, Texas. The U.S. champion coming out of the Southwest, the last non-Texas champion, 2011, Lafayette, Louisiana. Gavin Berry, the hitter here in the bottom of the second. His favorite book, Who Was Babe Ruth? Foul straight back. Keith, I came across a, a fun Babe Ruth story in this 
Jane Levy Ruth biography I'm in the middle of and there's a story in Ruth's last season with the Yankees a kid reporter came in to interview the babe and said what do you think about when you're in the batter's box and the babe gave a great babe response he said well when I step in I think about the pork chops I had last night and if there was enough salt on the barbecue sauce but as soon as that pitcher winds up and rears back to throw mind is clear I'm just thinking about the ball Wow two and two pork chops though pork when he chops. first steps in oh yeah especially if they were good outside three and two big pitch here just gotten the lead Lead off walk to Gavin Berry. It's always one of those things you, you get the lead. Sometimes you, you try to get too quick and force the issue. Don't think you'll see Bunt here. Egan Prey through the catcher, nicknamed a little perm. Shows bumped, sure takes did. a strike. You brought up a great point before we came on the air. Prather, the starting catcher for Louisiana, he's also their number two pitcher. Now, if he catches more than three innings, he is not eligible to pitch today. High fly ball right field. Kali in foul territory makes the catch. Comes right back. Fellow does a nice job right there. He didn't let the walk affect him. Came back and just poured two strikes in there. The man with the shoes, Derek DeLatte. We told you about Connor Peratt's father, Floyd, using leather paint to design cleats for a number of the Louisiana players. Wait till you see the shoe game for DeLatte. Lifted down the left field line and foul. Delat is five for six with a triple and four RBI in this regional. He's got the ESPN logo on his cleat. He's got the SVP logo on the cleat. He understands branding. Behind 0 and 2. Scott Van Pelt saw the shoe game and he has a rooting interest now in this Southwest Regional. Tell you what, the lad has done nothing but hit six for seven now, and that on an 0 2 pitch. He was ready for that fastball, did a nice job of bringing his hands in and barreling this one up. Set right there, quick. See that front side got down, he got his weight transferred. He got on top of that fastball. Two on, one out for the number eight hitter, Ryder Planchard. Ball one high. Blanchard's grandfather pitched in the Red Sox organization. His travel ball coach was four-time big league all-star Ben Sheets. A pitcher with the Brewers, 10 seasons in the majors. 2-0. 35 pitches now. It is a very hot day here. Falling behind now. It's hard to pitch when you're down in the count. Runner going to third, throw is wide, and DeLatte moves down to second after the throw, heads up base running, and now two in scoring position. Now 
You can see he does a nice job, sees he, he's got a chance. Really nice play by Rogers. Keep that ball out of left field. Infield up on the right side. Hey, you got to worry about wild pitch. The free pass is allowing the run to score. And is a hitter? Contact, contact. Serrano looking for his fourth strikeout. Instead of full count, the number nine hitter, Stan Wiltz, on deck. Ball four, Serrano wanted the call. Sam Lopez says it's inside and the bases are loaded. Second walk of the inning. Tired. Texas team around the mound right here. You gotta know where you're gonna go with the baseball. Wilts is tough to double up. He's got really good speed here. I would think the corners and the mound would come to the plate. Get the force out, probably play for two in the middle. Stan the man. His dad is a sports agent, a college baseball player who was drafted by the Pirates. And uncle Jason was a fourth round pick of the Jets. Inside corner, 0 1. Serrano has struck out three. Here's where it helps to have a strikeout pitcher, no doubt. One and two. Big pitch coming right here. You go to the breaker ball again. Got to make sure as a hitter right here that you make contact. And as a pitcher, you're looking for that strikeout. You got two options. You either climb the ladder with the fastball. One, two. A good location with the breaker. I think he's going upstairs with the heater. Grounded a second. Throw to first. And they get. Wilts at first. Stock still may have had a chance there to tag the runner and get the double play. Instead, a run does score, and we're tied at one. Right here, he's got a shot right there. You just reach up, you can make that tag or force him back to the bag and make him stop. And took the out. Top of the order now, Ryan Dara, second and third. 0-1. Two outs now. Dara, two for 11 in this regional. He struck out his first time. Big Colorado Rockies fan. Good breaking pitch, 0-2. Yeah, but you go back in this inning, they've answered. That's it's what you're trying to do if you're Louisiana. They've come back, got an answer, took advantage of two free passes. The two walks, a major part of that. Manager Scott Frazier down at third base. A few words of encouragement. Still 0-2 to Dara. Did a nice job of shortening up right there. Just shortening up. Got to get that up. Get on top of the ball a little bit. You can see Coach Frazier talking about it. You shorten, but you still got to get top. It's about velocity. The way you hit velocity is the barrel of the bat gets above the ball. So you don't have to be really powerful to the ball. You've got to be quick to the ball and on top of it. 25th pitch of the inning for Serrano. And he gets down swinging. La Madrid lost the ball. 
A run scores, and on the drop third strike, Dara takes first base. And that continues the inning. He just couldn't find it. Did a nice job of keeping it in front, but he couldn't find the baseball. And right here, he can reach up. If he goes to the bag, he's got a chance to tag the runner at the plate. He realized he couldn't get the out at first. And Louisiana's taking the lead. Rochelle now the hitter. Anytime you see that kind of play extend to the inning, flashback to game four of the 1941 World Series. Mickey Owen for the Brooklyn Dodgers. The catcher with Tommy Henrik at the plate for the Yankees. Drop third strike in the ninth inning. The Yanks were down to their last out. Henrik reaches. The Yankees score four runs. They win the game and they would win the series the following day. Don't be surprised to see some kind of first and third trying to steal a run right here. Louisiana has been very aggressive on the base pass. Oh and two ahead of Roussel who singled his first time. This would be when you try to do it. Try to get a team to make a mistake and throw to the wrong base. Panic a little bit because of a runner. This will be the 50th pitch of the game for Serrano. 85 is the maximum he can throw. Swing and a miss. The inning is over, but Louisiana takes the lead. An RBI ground out and a drop third strike. By counting for the two runs. For these kids today, boy, this is the moment of their young lives. A chance to go to Williamsport and play in the Little League World Series. That's what's at stake in this regional final. River Ridge, Louisiana against Midland, Texas. Texas at the plate here in the top of the third, down 2-1. Change it catcher here. We talked about Prather would be the guy that would come in in relief. But here in the third inning, they go to Planchard behind the plate. 9-1 and 2 for Midland. Ian Shadden will lead it off. Easy E's favorite book is The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. The great Mark Twain classic. Three and one. Full count, 72 miles per hour. The MLB equivalent there, 94 from Marshall Luke. When you get to the mid 70s, you're rushing it up there. Strike three, Shadden down looking, third strikeout for Luke. And a nice job coming back right there. He fell behind 3-0. Team just gave him the lead. And he comes back with three really good pitches right at the top of the zone right there. What's new in Little League this year, no 13-year-olds can play. So ages 10 to 12 are those that are eligible. As the leadoff man, La Madrid, takes a strike. That means you don't see as much velocity as you do in the past. So when you have a guy like Luke, it plays up a little more. It does. <laughs> now he takes something off, and La Madrid took a big puts, hack. Puts a wrinkle in it right there, and you're out in front of it. Because you got to be, you got to turn up the volume, so to speak, to get to the fastball. It'll be an 0-2. Swing and a miss. Four strikeouts now for Luke. Just 
He's so calm. He has a great mound presence. And now with the lead, he is attacking. Cole Netherland down the right field line. And that is a foul ball. Well, this part of the order for Texas. Is this way you want to face them? Two outs, nobody on. Oh, and two. You're so geared up for that heater, you get the breaking ball or the off-speed stuff, and well, that's what happens. Marshall Luke strikes out the side. He struck out four in a row. The star pitcher for Louisiana has a bit of inspiration. In when I found out Max I can't, I was sad because I couldn't do the stuff that we normally do. He's funny and stuff, and like, he's just a good kid. What I try to do when he comes out to practice with us is to try to take his mind off of what he's going through. We let him practice with us, like when we're doing little scrimmages, we let him come play. He takes ground balls with us, and sometimes we ask him to be the bat boy. The boys know he's, he's going through a struggle, so I think it, it, it puts in perspective some of the uh, issues that they may have in their life will, will seem maybe not as important as what they what they think. He's been through way more than a lot of us, and we've, we just stay behind his back and whatever he's going through. Carmen Luke, mother to Marshall and Maddox, and Maddox nine years old. Marshall's younger brother diagnosed with a rare form of cancer a few years ago. He's been in and out of the hospital, but as you heard, he's become a part of this team. Luke calls for time. Marshall Luke, three innings of one run ball on the mound. 0 for 1 at the plate. The ability to throw the breaking ball for both of these guys, especially against some of the good hitters, what they do is it, you go to the plate, you're seeking the fastball, and all of a sudden you look up, you're down in the count. Now the big difference right now is the total pitches thrown. Serrano has thrown 52, and that's in two plus. Luke has only thrown 36 in three full innings. Strike three, good bender. Six strikeouts now for Aiden Serrano. But you, you get a hitter coming to the plate saying, I'm looking fastball. So you don't throw a strike with your breaking ball. You get it outside the zone. Get ahead. Come back with a real good one that was a strike. And then you start that one at a little different shape. He got on top of that, took a little bit off of it. Disprosing. Connor Perrot with a big hack, 0-1. He was a strikeout victim his first time. We mentioned the pitch counts. 85 is the maximum a pitcher can throw. 54 for Serrano. 0-2, oh and, and it becomes a bit of a war of attrition if you get that starter out of there now. Texas has some arms, but Serrano, they've been saving him for this game for a reason. Same with Louisiana, if you get Luke out of there, they've got some quality arms, but none as good as the top two. Outside, Serrano had thrown 13 consecutive strikes before that. He's got to continue to pound the zone. He's got to get some quick outs, too. Two two to Connor Parrott, whose favorite athlete, a fictional one, Rick Vaughn. Thirtieth anniversary of Major League playing? California Penal League. I got you. <laughs> Strike three. Seven strikeouts for Serrano. Tonight it's Wednesday night baseball. Brewers and Christian Yelich facing the Pirates. Finale of a three-game set. 
7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Milwaukee in the thick of the wild card race, chasing Chicago in the NL Central as well. We'll get a pinch hitter here for Gavin Berry. It's going to be Alton Shorts, one for three in the regional. I spoke to Alton's grandma before the game outside of the stadium. She was telling us just how proud the family is of Al. This was uh, a family. The grandmother lost everything in Hurricane Katrina. Wow. River Ridge, Louisiana, just 10 miles outside of New Orleans. Wow. And there's his grandma with the sunglasses. First, Shadden steps on the bag. And Serrano navigates through the heart of the order in a 1 2 3 fashion. A trip to Williamsport to the winner of this game. Aiden Serrano on the right yeah. has struck out Marshall Luke twice, and now. Serrano will step in to face Luke for the second time. The difference is right there. You look at those 62 pitches and those two walks. Those two walks the difference in the game right now. Serrano grounded back to the mound his first time up. Breaking ball outside. Serrano's favorite team, the Houston Astros. Zach Greinke made his debut last night. Overall numbers didn't look great from yesterday, but boy, going into the postseason with Verlander, Cole, Granke, and Miley atop that rotation with that lineup, I'd think, Keith, they've got to be the favorites to win their second title in three years. I, I would definitely concur. And, and right now, they're hitting balls out of the ballpark, too. They, they, offensively, they, there's, not a, there's not a spot. 2-1. Slashed foul. With well, two strikes, you become very defensive against Marshall Luke. You've seen all hitters, they, they get a little defensive. They're not as aggressive because his ability to put you away. Stays alive. Coaches told us they feel Serrano's a kid who has a chance to play at higher levels. You see that, Keith? In multiple sports, maybe. He's this very athletic young man. Full count. He's got a good arm. He's got excellent speed. He's been a terrific defender in center field. And Serrano works a leadoff walk. Fifth time he's walked in this regional. Well, that's just something. That is the first walk issued in this entire Regional by Marshall Luke. That tells you not only does he have the best velocity here, he's had the best command. Nine and a third innings before issuing the walk. Ties up Rogers 0 1. Jaden Rogers had a double to lead off the second inning, and he came around to score the only run for Texas. He's been on fire. Two nights ago against this Louisiana team, Jaden Rogers, dead center.
How about the off-speed offering and Rogers frozen. Six strikeouts for Luke. Just a great location away. Catcher moves out. Break a ball starts out. It's the strikeout. Swing and a miss by Crew Colley. He had a bunt single in that second inning. Texas had first and third and nobody out. Only scored one though. That one finds the hole through the right side. That baseball had eyes and there's two on with one out. Line drive in the box score. Absolutely, he was fooled on the breaking ball, but he just got enough of the barrel right there. You can see him reaching out. And then he has got excellent speed. Once he goes down and gets it right here, the hitters can smell base hits. I tell you, as an ex-hitter, you see, you got, oh, that got a chance to get a knock right there, and he got it. Upstairs to Levi Bailey. Bailey, like George Costanza, wants to be an architect. Don't overthrow. Okay, don't overthrow. Under control. Hey, we got to play fast and we got to play hard. Okay? Dive for the ball. We got to get an out right there. Okay, so we got to play fast and we got to play hard. Look, in this situation here, don't worry so much about the double play as much as getting a out right now. Okay? Getting an out, all right? Tell the outfielders come up hitting their cutoff on a base hit. All right? Settle down. Okay? Settle down. Out front. Let's go. Come on. Well, two things that I take away from that really good advice. One is don't overthrow. It, it, all, you've been so good at mound presence. You've been very much under control as a pitcher. Got to take a deep breath and go back to what you're doing right there. And then the second part of that, get an out. On a, on a ball that you've got an opportunity to get an out, take the out. One ball, one strike. The count to Levi Bailey. This one gets away from Planchard. And now the force outs are out of play. Second and third. One out. And if you're Texas, you can now trade and out for a run. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. And I would think if you're with the go-ahead run at second base, you got to play the infield back a little bit. Maybe the corners will come up. Infield will remain back on the left side. Ooh. Now they'll start to creep up about halfway. Third baseman right in on the lip of the grass. Blew it by Bailey, two and two. If you the hitter here, you're up on the bat. Spreading your stance a little bit, maybe not striding much and try to make contact. Still throwing gas, 72 miles per hour. Major league equivalent of 94. In the air, down the right field line, foul territory. Parat ran out of room. Luke up to 55 pitches now. He's starting to get up in the zone a little bit. A lot of these balls are contact because they've been up. Bailey still fighting. Levi Bailey in the number six spot in this lineup. Outfield is really shallow. Anything that's in the gap, that's got any kind of velocity is going to get by him to the wall. Strike three. Big strikeout for Luke. His seventh of the game. Well, he just climbed the ladder. Bailey couldn't get on top of it. Boy, that's a gigantic out. Pinch hitter for Jared Stockstill in the seventh spot. It'll be Jake Nava. Now that will be number 13, Jake Nava. Nava big, tall, lefty. Five foot eight.
What a big strikeout. Second and third. And one Bailey out. Put a pretty good at bat on the niche and, and until he just went after that one that was upstairs. This one off the glove of Blanchard. Serrano scores and the game is tied. Louisiana has been so good this entire tournament of limiting those free passes, those little mistakes, but the two wild pitches in the inning tie the score. A leadoff walk coupled with two wild pitches. One and one to Nava. A walk, a strikeout, a single. Keith mentioned the wild pitches, and we've got a 2-2 game here in the fourth. Rudder on third. Two outs for Nava. Luke one pitch away from his eighth strikeout. So far, it's been a bit of a mirror match. Both teams scored their first run on a ground out to second, and both teams scored their second run on a wild pitch. Nice play by Plancher to prevent another run. Both pitchers now at 62 pitches. You're at this point of the game. I don't think either one of them are going to finish. So it's, it's going to be involved. The bullpens are going to be involved in this. 26 pitch inning for Luke. And it is a steamy afternoon here in Waco, oh, Texas. No Grounded foul. We've seen Texas take some really good at bats. Uh, Bailey earlier did strike out. You can see that temperature says 98, 99, but when you put the humidity in there, the heat index, we're under heat advisories here in McClendon County, Texas. Rounded to the right side. That'll do it. Texas made Marshall Luke work in the fourth. Aiden Serrano making his first appearance on the mound in this regional for Texas. Well, he's done a nice job. He, he's pinpointed his fastball. He's been able to mix in a breaking ball. He has struck out seven Louisiana batters. On the other side, Marshall Luke has visited brilliant every time we've seen him out there. He's used an explosive fastball sometimes in the major league equivalent in the mid-90s. The difference in this game is the fact that both second runs in this ball game were created via the wild pitch. Winner punches his ticket to Williamsport. Tied at two as you look at the Honda game summary. Bottom of the fourth, six, seven, and eight do up for Louisiana. And a strike one to the pinch hitter, Will Andrade. He'll bat. And the sixth spot for Egan Prather. Andre made two wonderful plays on Monday night. He came in and got the save and the 6 5 win. Serves this one up into left center. Andre going for two, and he'll beat the throw. A leadoff double for Will Andre. Boy, just a wonderful piece of hitting ball up and out over the plate gets on top of it the other way and then he thinks too right here I mean this is a really nice play to get this ball back in but he leaves home plate thinking about getting to second base and does an outstanding job of hustling in there with a the leadoff double and now Louisiana has Derek Delat at the plate who has been the hottest hitter in this regional, he is six for seven, singled and came around to score in the second inning. 
Every time he's up, he's done something positive. You can see Ender as he slides in to the base right there. And he got back. The tag was not applied. He was off the base there for a little bit. But the glove right here, when he is off the base, you get a chance to see it again. He might have popped off, but the glove is not down to make the tag. Then he is back on the bag right there. That is a play you can challenge and review. We have video replay for all televised regional and Little League World Series games. That is the glove get him that split second that foot is off the bag. That's what's in question call on the field was safe so you have to see evidence that's conclusive to tell you otherwise well my first initial read on the, the replay we had was yes he did pop off the bag but the glove the tag was tagging the bag and not the runner here comes the call runner safe <laughs> So the leadoff double by Andre to stands. And now Derek Dillette, favorite movie is Avengers Endgame, and like Thanos, he has been inevitable. Six for seven in this regional. Filmed the commercial with Drew Brees at age four. Shows bunt, misses 0-1. That was a really good break ball. Next to impossible to bunt that. It, 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 you just see that late movement on it. Through the baseball. Through the ball. Hit hard. Another hit for Delat. Andrade stops at third. And Derek DeLatte is now seven for eight. Mom Jennifer applauds. Well, he's been so good, just dropping the head of the bat of the ball. Everything cooled downstairs. And you can see, watch this bat comes, come out of his hands as he makes contact right there. It's gone. A pinch hitter in the eighth spot. It'll be Peyton Spadoni. One for two with a double in this regional. A double by Andre, a single by Delat, first and third. Nobody out, 2-2 two -two game, bottom of the fourth. The winner advances to Williamsport and the Little League World Series. Special pinch runner also at first base. That's going to be Alton Shorts. And in. Well, right now, one for sure defensively. Yes, we the go ahead run is at third base, but right now you've got to defensively. You need it. You need an out right here with nobody out first and third. Corners slightly in. One and one. I mean, if you're the big right hander, you need that strikeout. You, you, you've got seven of them in the game. Well, you need that eighth one right here. Runner going to second, throw down, not in time, and Andrade holds up at third, so second and third, the force out at second is out of play now. Well, I think you got to come up and try to cut this run off at the plate. Infield comes in now. Gets away. Throw to the plate, not in time. Andrade scores the go-ahead run. Well, the last three runs have scored all via the wild pitch. Tag gets in there late. 
on the plate. Still nobody out in the inning. Scott Frazier calls an offensive timeout. The special pinch runner, Alton Schwartz, moved up to third. Still nobody out. And a 3-1 count to Spadoni. Still have to have the infield up. We're here with nobody out. Those free passes we've talked about all through this regional here in Waco. Full count. You stay right there. That's a dynamite pitch here. Not a, there's not a lot of slugging percentage right there. See if he can make it. Repeat it here. Is a hitter got to make contact. Swing and a miss, strike three. Up number one, strikeout number eight for Serrano. Now back-to-back -back dynamite pitches, 3-1 and 3-2. Just got it by him into the glove before the barrel gets there. Jeff Curtis will bat in the nine spot. So Louisiana has now satisfied mandatory play with a 13-man roster. Everyone had to bat at least once. Up and in. Curtis's grandfather, JT, a Hall of Fame high school football coach. Right on the black. Couldn't get over how many undefeated seasons his grandfather had. It's hard to go un unblemished at any level. Thirteen times. That's incredible. Fifty. Seasons under his belt. This will be his 51st season. Three and one on deck is the leadoff hitter, Dara. Well, we talked about that these pitchers might not be able to finish now 77 pitches total for the Texas right hander. Yeah, so he may only have. One or two more batters here. 85 is the maximum a pitcher can throw. <laughs> Strike three. Nine strikeouts for Serrano. He's at 79 pitches. And this is a tired young man right now. You can see him. Maybe he's starting to cramp a little bit. He's taking more time in between pitches. As we talked about, it is a scorching day here in Central Texas. And only the third is the only inning that he really was not pushed. Dara has struck out twice. Last time up, he struck out. It would have been the third out of the inning, but it was a drop third strike. Darrell was able to reach first on the wild pitch, and a run scored. It was a big play in this game. Well, this is a turning point in the game. You're down to six outs offensively if you're Texas. You've got this run at third base, and it looks like at this point that scoring is really hard. Boy, this is the biggest at bat of the game so far. 0-2. Yeah. Yeah. Oh 81 pitches now for Serrano. 
Now, if you start and at bat under that 85 pitch threshold and then go over, you're allowed to finish the at bat. A runner on third. Two outs, two strikes on Dara, the leadoff man. La Madrid, a lot of pressure on the catcher right here. Grounded to the left side. Rogers across the diamond, and that'll do it. But Louisiana pushes ahead the go-ahead run. They lead by one. We go to the fifth. Our goal was to make it to Williamsport at the beginning of the year. It would be the greatest thing ever for me because um, I've been focusing on that this whole year, and that would just be awesome. It's the mecca of youth athletics is making it to Williamsport. So hopefully we have the experience. Um, I think one way or another, come tomorrow, win or lose, I'm probably going to be crying after the game. Louisiana six outs away from Williamsport looking to become the first Louisiana team since 2011 to get to that slice of Pennsylvania paradise. Gavin Schubert will hit in the eighth spot for Prado to begin the fifth. Schubert 0 for 2 in this regional. Marshall Luke at 66 pitches for Louisiana. Infield expecting the bunt. Egan Prather getting loose for Louisiana. And they are anticipating the bunt. Everybody up tight for Schubert. Now with two strikes, the infield retreats. But not that far back. They're still anticipating the bunt. Bunted up the first baseline. Luke bobbles it. Schubert stumbled. And he's going to be out of first base. I don't think there was any contact. Let's take another look. Well, as he's coming down the line, it's in fair territory. There's Did no he question. Trip? It looked like he may have tripped over Luke's foot before Luke had the ball. Take another look. Uh, definitely, there's contact right there. There was contact. Is he inside or outside of the running lane going down the line? Really difficult call right there. Is that interference in your eyes? I don't believe it was interference. As a runner, you have to give the right to the fielder to make the play. And I think that's what was called. It, as a runner, you have a running lane on the outside of the baseline. And if you're in your running lane there, uh, you know, if there's contact there, you're, you're okay. But if you're in the field to play, and not in the running lane. You can see he's in the field of play right there. He's running down the line. So his contact is in the field of play. You can see where the running lane starts right there. Was not out in it. I think it's the proper call. Call will stand. One out for the nine spot now for Texas. Sixty nine pitches for Marshall Luke. Kip Colmia now the hitter. He'll bat for Ian Shadden. Colmia 0 for 4 in this regional. Yeah. 
take a look at it one more time here. You can see Luke get to the ball. Schubert running inside, though that that's for me the key is that he was not in his running lane. He was running in fair territory. The fielder has the opportunity to make the play. I totally believe that was a proper call. That's officially scored runner interference. And that's to your point, Keith. As we said, fielder has the opportunity to make the play. Yeah, he's, you're given the right as a fielder to make the play. You as a runner have to avoid him. This one bunted foul. That tells you what they think of Marshall Luke. Trying to bunt their way on here in the fifth. Grayson Register is the only Texas player not to bat. He has to get in for Texas. That's part of mandatory play. When you have 13 players, everyone has to bat at least once. <laughs> Colmia stays alive, still 0-2. 73 pitches now for Luke. You and I both thinking the same thing. If these balls fouled off, uh, is he going to have enough pitches to finish? Spoils another one. If this is a quiet inning for Texas, they'll have some thunder in the sixth. And this has been a really good at bat for Colmia. Fouled off five pitches. Working the pitch count. It's one and two. Bounce to second. The lat over to first, two outs. If you're looking for training videos for coaches and umpires, get free backyard tips, practice plans, drills, videos, and more. LittleLeagueUniversity.org. Two outs now, the leadoff spot. Carlos La Madrid is due up, but Grayson Register will hit. So Texas has now satisfied mandatory play. And if Luke retires Register here, It'll be two, three, and four in the sixth for Texas. It will be. If he can do it quickly, he would come back to the mound and have an opportunity to be on the mound. Ball one, register two for four in the regional. He can eat an entire lemon, and he rubs his dad's belly for good luck. It's got to be tart, doesn't it? An entire lemon? If you can do it, sure. But yeah, I. I I haven't tried it. All right. Eightieth pitch of the game coming. Bounce to the right side. Easy play at first for Parat. Louisiana is three outs away from going to Williamsport. They get another turn at bat here. In the 82 pitches deep. He comes back out. He's got three left on his board. He really did a nice job early in the game of setting up this breaking ball. He has struck out nine Louisiana batters, none bigger than his eighth and ninth strikeout in the bottom of the fourth inning where they had an opportunity to really blow this game wide open. You can see the numbers. Those two walks just really devastating in the thing. And then, of course, wild pitch has scored two of the three runs, and he will be facing at least one batter here, his 83rd pitch coming. Reese Roussel, one for two with a single. Takes a strike, and if Serrano does not retire Roussel on this pitch, this will be Aiden Serrano's last batter.
Oh, and two. So this will be Serrano's last batter. About to throw his 85th pitch. Now he can go over this 85 pitch threshold to complete the at bat. Roussel does have a home run in this regional. Came in the opening game. That was against Arkansas. Six home runs have been hit in this regional. Five by Louisiana. Again, looking ahead to the top of the sixth for Texas. If it's a one-run game, they'll have some thunder up with Serrano due up second, Rogers due up third. Guys, that can leave the yard. Louisiana looks for insurance here in the bottom of the fifth. From 0-2 to 2-2, gonna make it happen right here. Marshall Luca waiting on deck. Get you two quick ones. All right, nice job of getting the barrel to that, just fighting that off. Hey, Tied him up inside job. with the heater. Serrano looking to end his day with his 10th strikeout. Ripped foul. What do those left-handers like the ball? Down and in. Down and in. And I'm telling you, he hit a ball out of here in game one. He got a fastball down and in, and he rocketed it out of here. Don't want to go down there. Seventh pitch of the at-bat. Strike three. Serrano's day is done. Four and a third innings. Ten strikeouts. He was the ace in the hole in every way, and he gave his team a chance today. He absolutely did. He came out, limited Louisiana to just four base hits. How right, about the sportsmanship? The Louisiana the fans standing team, and hey, giving him an ovation. You hear me? You hear me? You hear me? You awesome game. Let's go to work, fellas. We're gonna go win the Center field, Aiden. Serrano's day is done. Ten strikeouts in four and a third innings. Gave up three runs, walked two, only four hits. It's a 3-2 lead for Louisiana with one out here in the fifth inning and the new pitcher for Texas, Cole Netherland, the manager's son. He's pitched twice in this regional, four innings, only one run. He has walked three, he struck out three. He's got the meat of the order. He's got a face coming into the game. Marshall Luke swings at the first pitch and nubs it foul. Luke hit two home runs against Texas two nights ago. 0 for 2 today, struck out twice against Serrano. And, and straightaway power, too. Both up to dead straightaway center field. Tied him up with a breaking ball, 0-2. Yeah, started it out inside. That was a backup. And I guarantee you hitters all hate backup breaking balls because if you could throw that and command that, you would never give up a hit on a breaking ball. This one driven out to left, but hooking foul. Just early. Uh, first one fastball up and out of the plate. It was a no doubter. I mean, over the top of the light towers, it seemed like. Second one was more of a line drive homer. This one driven out to right field. Collie can't make the play. Luke to third, standing up. Boy, you can see here the strength. 
fastball. He gets, he gets jammed. Colley trying to get back to it, reaches up over, just can't come down with it. Infield has to come up here for Texas. Big insurance run at third. And a strike one to Connor Parrott. 0 for 2, a couple of strikeouts today. Don't have to get a baser right here to really help your club. Contact into the outfield. Two strikes to count. You're the right-hander here. This is when you try to go for that strikeout. Parrott. That's in the cleanup spot in this Louisiana lineup. We're not going to worry about last pitches. Let's worry about this pitch, right? We're wasting energy, right? Blow it out. All right? Now, come on. Refocus on what you're doing, okay? Punch a ball over a second baseman's head. Do something like that, okay? Hey, positive. Not nine. Hey, hey, confidence. Confidence. Dad Floyd, who designs the cleats for so many of these Louisiana players. Came back with a fastball away. He's trying to go up, missed his spot. This one hits the pitcher, caroms to third. Rogers across the diamond, not in time. They say the throw pulled to the first baseman, shattered off the bag, first and third. This is a really nice job of hitting, staying back on a breaker ball upstairs. It gets off the back of Netherland. He think about going to the plate, throw coming across the diamond. It just was high enough, and it's really close at first. If I'm Texas, this is worth a challenge at this juncture in the game. It is a reviewable play. You also hope Netherland is okay on the mound. That was a hard hit ball. First and third, the runner stayed put at third. Let's see, foot does come up right there. Does he get back on the bag in time? Can't tell if there's contact there. Better view right here. Up, off of the bag. Now does it come back down in time? I think oh, it might have. close. Keith, I think he may have been out. I think the foot comes down on the bag. Yeah, right there. Great job by our camera crew. Listen, it may not get overturned because it's so close, but in this spot, I think it's definitely worth a challenge if you're Texas. Oh, I don't think there's a question about it. It would be the second out of the inning and be an out away from coming up. Number 24, Gavin Berry. It does not appear. And Texas challenged Spadoni, the special pinch runner at first. Gavin Berry now the number five hitter. Into the gap, left center field. Luke scores. Spadoni around third. He's coming home. He'll score. A two-run double by Gavin Berry. And Louisiana with a little more breathing room. It's a knuckleball that just stays up in the zone. And Gavin Berry just drills it into the gap. Separation, as you mentioned. Great base running, too, by Louisiana. And this changes the complexion of the game now. A three-run lead for Louisiana. Egan Prather at the dish. Ball gets away from La Madrid. Barry scampers to third. Now you got to come in, cut the run off at the plate here. How many times have we seen the stud pitcher come out of the game and all of a sudden there's just a little bit more mojo in the other dugout. Hey, all right, the next guy doesn't throw as hard. And it's not a knock on Cole Netherland. Just sometimes 
a bit of relief. Okay, we don't have to face Aiden Serrano. And yeah, the glimmer of hope for Texas is that Marshall Luke is at 80 pitches. He's probably not going to be able to finish it. Luke might have a batter or two in the sixth. Two one to Prather. Two and one. You just kind of keep pushing though if you're Texas and give yourself a chance. Right now you can couple on, you can get the tying run to the plate. So I did try to protect that last run down at third. Infield in. Three and two. Aiden Serrano was the pitcher for Texas when the inning started. He struck out the only batter he faced, came out due to pitch count, and then it's been triple, single, double for Louisiana. Popped up. High fly, left center. Serrano the catch. He's got a cannon. Here's the throw home. Safe. Great effort by Serrano to come in. What a pick by Le Madrid. Does he get a tag on him? Can't tell from that angle. Ball definitely was there first. Does he get a tag on? He does not. Excellent call right there. There was no tag. What a slide what by a Gavin slide. Berry. Goes back to him. Just no tag. That's another tremendous throw from the outfield by Serrano. On the money, the throw beat the runner, but a nifty slide by Berry to avoid the tag. What a great play. You see him coming into this direction. Madrid does a great job of catching the short hop, but you can see right there, never gets his glove against him. They're going to review it. Just a great slide for the third run of the inning. The angle you just saw there is sort of how we see, see it from our position up here in the press box. And it looked like La Madrid from our angle might have tagged him. You wait for the umpire's call. Sam Lopez says safe. Then you see the reverse. The glove never gets the runner. It's going to be 6-2. to two. Here comes the call. Runner, safe! Sam Lopez, home plate umpire. So Serrano comes out of the game, and then Louisiana erupts. A triple by Luke. A single by Perrot. Luke did not advance. A two-run double by Berry. And then a sack fly by Prather. Two outs, nobody on now. And Derek Delat is the hitter. Two for two today. Seven for eight in this Southwest Regional. Three Titanic insurance runs for Louisiana. three outs to work with you got to keep grinding you need to get this out knocked down Netherland over to first and Delat retired for just the second time in this regional but River Ridge Louisiana with three in the fifth the big hit a two-run double by Gavin Berry it's the last chance for Texas down four down to their final three outs Hey, pride and fight, you hear me? Yes, sir. Pride and fight, you hear me? Yes, sir. Let's show everybody what Millen's. Hey, 
Everybody's counting us out. Let's not give up without a fight. You got me? Yes, sir. Let's do this. You got me? Yes, sir. Northern on three. One, two, three, Northern. It's the last chance for Midland, Texas, from the Permian Basin, the plains of West Texas. Two, three, and four, and the order due up here in the sixth. A 1-1 count to Cole Netherland, and Marshall Luke at 82 pitches. Line drive, base hit center field. Leadoff man is aboard, and 83 pitches for Luke. Start the line moving. That's your, that's your total thought, is just, and that's exactly what he did. He got the line moving. More than likely, the last batter that Luke will face is right here. And he's got a tough customer. It's Aiden Serrano. A walk and a ground out. Takes a strike. That's pitch 84. So this will be the last batter for Marshall Luke. Five plus innings, two runs. Serrano could not hold up. It's 0-2. Three huge insurance runs for Louisiana in the bottom of the fifth. 6-2, River Ridge on top of Midland. Ball. Good pitch. Just missed in the right spot, though. You knew it's going to ball down to these two. And the count runs full. The two respective stars of their team. Here in the sixth inning with the winner of this game going to Williamsport. Serrano just gets a piece. Three balls, two strikes, nobody out, a man on. Top of the sixth. Southwest Regional Championship. Swing and a miss, one away. Went to a breaking ball on his 90th pitch of the day on a 3-2 count. It was a perfect breaking ball. Starts it out right there, had him over the top of it. Gigantic strikeout. And the day is done for Marshall Luke. Five and a third innings, two runs, four hits, eight strikeouts. Huh? All right, well, hey, hey, he said he went over his pitch count to give you an opportunity to get on the mound. So thank him. All right, let's go finish it up. Great job. All right, Andre, you with me, buddy. You're going to third. Yeah, go get some water. Come on. Egan Prather, the new pitcher. We'll be right back. A look at Williamsport, Pennsylvania. A piece of paradise. And that's the goal for both of these teams, Texas and Louisiana, the winner of this game, heads to Williamsport and the Little League World Series. Egan Prather, the new pitcher, and he pumps a strike to Jaden Rogers. Two to Rogers, who had a big double in the second and came around to score. Strike three. Louisiana one out away. Sports Center tonight at six. When will Antonio Brown put his foot down? How about the Miracle Mets made some trades. Now trying to work their way back into the mix to the National League, and we go all access with Jalen Hurts and Oklahoma. Swing and a miss by Crew Colley. Louisiana two strikes away from Williamsport. Can't get ahead of yourself, Anish. You still got to con continue to compete if you're Louisiana. I think they're going to give you that last out. Right back to the mound. Prather over to first, and Louisiana is headed to the Little League World Series.
You know, from the beginning of this tournament, we felt like they were one of the favorites, and they didn't disappoint. They were the best at, at catching it. They were the best on the mound, and they were the best offensively. It, it, they have just went out and taken command of this and walking away with their ticket to Williamsport. 4-0 in this Southwest Regional, the only team to come to Waco and leave without a single loss. And they beat Midland, Texas twice on their way to this regional championship. 6-2 the final. East Bank Little League out of River Ridge, Louisiana. The first team from that state to win this Southwest Regional since Lafayette did it in 2011. Well, they got the run. They beat the two best teams we got to see here today. There's no question. The boys of summer will live out their dream in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. We wish all the best to East Bank Little League and River Ridge. And congratulations to all the teams that took part in this Southwest Regional. A big accomplishment and something these kids won't ever forget. Coming up next, more Little League from the Southeast region. Virginia and Georgia is next.